Hey guys, Coach Sue and Coach Alex here with Physique Development, and today we're gonna to be educating on the lat bias horizontal row. But before we get into things here, we would love if you could go ahead and subscribe, like, and comment. And what should they comment? What's their favorite back exercise? Yeah, your favorite back exercise, go ahead and comment down below. And if you wanna see if we have a video on them, then check out our back playlist. But getting into this movement here, one thing I always like to disclaim is that no muscle works in isolation. So while this is a exercise that we are biasing a muscle group, there's still going to be secondary muscles working, stabilizer muscles working. So knowing that, yes, we are biasing the lat, but there still are other muscles involved here. So I'm gonna go ahead and have Alex sit down. And before we get into the movement, we're gonna go over a little bit of anatomy, and this is gonna be really helpful in a few minutes. So Alex, if you can go ahead and turn around. When we look at the lat, it is actually gonna originate here on the spine and it's gonna fan up and it's gonna insert on the back of the upper arm. And this is gonna come in handy, like I said, here in a little bit. So if you can go ahead and turn again, I'm not gonna have you pick this up quite yet, but we're gonna go through the arm path and angle. So one thing that we wanna be able to keep in mind is going to be having our foot against a foot pad and being able to have that for stabilization. Now, if you're too short for your gym's foot plate, then feel free to go ahead and grab some 45 pound plates and put them here to bring the plate closer to you, but you want this for some extra stabilization. And when we look at stabilization, we also wanna think about our core. And since this is gonna be an opposing muscle to our back, we wanna ensure that our core is engaged throughout this whole entire movement. Then we look at the positioning of the cable here. We see that where the cable starts, it actually goes to right about where his upper chest is. And this is actually gonna be a great positioning for him because we are gonna have some depression and we are gonna be rowing down a little bit. So that'll come into play here in a second. Then we also want to have a slight lean forward at the hip and we wanna maintain a neutral spine. So no rounding at the lower back or at the upper back, being able to have that neutral spine in place. And then he's gonna go ahead and reach his arms out in front of him. And we're gonna have a neutral grip for our lats. Again, this is gonna come down to where it originates and where it inserts and how we are going to get the most lat activation. And so we see those neutral hands are gonna be palms facing one another. Then as we go through this movement, we do wanna go ahead and start it with lowering this upper arm while also still having elbow flexion and going ahead and rowing simultaneously. So it's not that we lower the arm first and then row, this is all gonna be happening simultaneously, but we do wanna ensure that that, lower, that arm lowers down as we move through this. And we also wanna ensure that our elbows stop in line with our physique. We don't want this going way past our body as that's not really going to get us more bang for our buck when it comes to our lat engagement, since this is working the shortened position of the lat. And so going past that, when you're looking at how the lat is truly anatomically placed, isn't gonna have much benefit. So we're gonna go ahead and have Alex pick up the handles and go through a few reps here. Now, one thing that I didn't mention earlier is we want to ensure that our elbows stay close to our sides. We don't want our elbows flaring out to the side. We want to keep those close to our physique. So we want to also go through some common mistakes that we see with clients when going through this movement. Let's go ahead and go through mistake number one. But as you see this video, you'll see that there's a few different mistakes going on. So you'll see that the elbows are flaring away from the body. We also see that there's not a lot of lowering of the upper arm or depression of the scapula. And there's actually a lot of shrugging of the shoulders here. And so they're not getting a lot of lat engagement going through this movement, a lot of jamming joints is happening here. Let's go ahead and take a look at video number two. Here you see Alex as he's going through this movement, his elbows are going past his body. And you also see that he's not lowering his upper arm. There's no depression of the scapula happening here. The reason we don't wanna do this is since this is working the shortened position of the lat, and we talked about the origin and insertion points of on the spine and then on the back of the upper arm, when we're going past those points, you're not getting those any closer together or shortening the muscle anymore. So you're just causing more work for less result as you go through the movement. 
So if we go on to video number three, we see here that Alex is really focused on lowering the upper arm and that depression of the scapula. But with doing this, he doesn't end up having much elbow flexion or any of the rowing motion. And so going through this, he also had to make room for his knees and he didn't have the stabilization of having his foot against the foot plate. And so while it is going to be important to have that depression and think about lowering the upper arm, we also want to think about what it looks like to fully row in this position since this is a rowing movement as well as to have elbow flexion. Now I did want to go ahead and talk about the attachment that we we're using as I know that this isn't readily available at all gyms and this is going to be the four-in-one attachment from Prime Fitness. We will have it linked in the description box if you're interested in purchasing this as well as our home gym tour and our accessory tour of being able to talk about why we have each thing so you can decide if it's going to be a good fit for you to go ahead and take to the gym. I would also recommend being able to have the short bar and rotate handles as this grip is going to be really incredible and it's going to allow you to have a change within your grip. Now, since this isn't readily available at gyms, we do have a substitution for you, but I am gonna go ahead and be honest that you are going to lack some stabilization with this, especially as the load increases. So we do wanna be able to take that into consideration and see what is gonna be the best fit for you personally. So if you can have something with a neutral grip, that's probably gonna be the best. But otherwise, you can go ahead and take this long bar, also referred to as a lap pull down bar, grab some D handles and go ahead and go through the movement. I would like to thank my incredible model here for going through this exercise, but thank you guys so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you wanna check out any more of our free, yes, free content, then continue watching our YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed and you hit that notification bell. But you can also check us out on Instagram, TikTok, and our website, and there's tons of free content to be able to help you in your fitness goals. Now, if you're looking for a little bit of a more personalized approach and you need that accountability with one-on-one -on -one coaching, then go ahead and hop on a free call with us to see if you'd be a good fit. The inquiry link is below, and I can't wait to chat.